First, the breaking news tonight in the Mar-a-Lago documents investigation. It concerns Trump lawyer Evan, Evan Corcoran, who has been representing the former president in his negotiations with the Justice Department over classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. Corcoran has already appeared before the grand jury, but tonight NBC News confirms that special counsel Jack Smith is invoking the crime fraud exception in seeking more of Corcoran's testimony. In a sealed filing before a judge overseeing the grand jury, NBC reports that DOJ prosecutors have said that they have evidence that some of Trump's conversations with Corcoran were in furtherance of a crime. The news was first reported tonight by The New York Times. Quote, federal prosecutors overseeing the investigation into former President Donald Trump's handling of classified documents are seeking to pierce, pierce assertions of attorney-client privilege and compel one of his lawyers to answer more questions before a grand jury, adding an aggressive new dimension to the inquiry and underscoring the legal peril facing Trump. The prosecutors have sought approval from a federal judge to invoke what is known as the crime fraud exception, which allows them to work around attorney-client privilege when they have reason to believe that the legal advice or legal services have been used in furthering a crime. Now, you may recall that Mr. Corcoran reportedly drafted a statement last summer attesting to the fact that no further classified documents remained at Mar-a-Lago. That was just a few months before FBI agents conducted a search of the property and recovered an additional 100 documents with classification markings. So what does all this mean for the former president? Joining us now is Bradley Moss, a national security attorney who routinely represents federal officials and members of the military in matters that pertain to classified documents. Bradley, thanks for being here. Let me first just get your reaction to this breaking news in the New York Times that NBC has confirmed. Sure, absolutely, Alex. So this is pretty significant information, and it certainly shows that the special counsel continues to move forward and continues to burrow deeper and deeper into the inner parts of Trump world. This shows that they have evidence, not just that there was this, you know, various conduct and these uh, individuals working to potentially conceal information, but that their lawyers are aware of the details and may have been working with the underlying client to further the crime. That's part of how they would make this argument before the district court judge with respect to the crime fraud exception. It's a very high bar to meet. It certainly deserves to you know, be uh, sufficiently scrutinized, but if they can uh, overcome that privilege and get that testimony for the grand jury, that's very damaging for the former president. It sounds like, and this is our own Ken Delanian who sort of put it this way, but the prosecutors are trying to determine whether Trump instructed his lawyer, Evren Corcoran, to lie or whether Trump lied to Evan Corcoran. That seems to be the essence of all of this. Is that right? Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's, that's part of it. And it's also, did Trump talk to Evan Corcoran, or did it go through one of the other Trump world lawyers, Boris Epstein, who was mentioned in that New York Times article as well, and who's sort of this player who keeps staying around Trump world and who seems to have been overseeing the different lawyers? Who was giving the instruction to Evan Corcoran? And Evan Corcoran, of course, gave the instruction to Christina Bob and to Ann Guy. I heard to sign that statement back in June. Who was overseeing it and what information did they know? Does it all come back to Donald Trump in the end? Or was it someone else? Was it Boris Epstein who uh, went rogue and was trying to convey false information? That's what the DOJ's got to nail down. They've got to have clarity before they decide whether or not to pull the trigger and pursue an indictment. Do you think this represents a newly aggressive stance on the part of special counsel Jack Smith as it concerns Mar-a-Lago? I think because of the swirl around Biden and Pence and their own retention of classified documents, some folks thought that Smith might be backing off. Do you think that that's at all a consideration anymore? No, I never thought that was a consideration, nor would I have thought it was appropriate. If there's merit to, you know, the special counsel's case and any criminal liability for anybody with respect to President Biden, that should pursue its own track. And the same thing goes for former Vice President Pence. Donald Trump has his own problems, his own criminal exposure tied to his actions and the actions of his lawyers over the last two years down in Mar-a-Lago. This shows that Jack Smith is continuing down that path. He's not backing off. Doesn't mean he's going to pursue an ultimate indictment. Doesn't mean he even would even win at trial. But certainly they're not taking a back step to anything. They're going to see this through to the end. Bradley Moss, it's so great to have you on board as we surf this breaking news. Thanks for your time this evening. Really appreciate it. Absolutely.